What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Craig Long. I'm here with another exclusive interview. I'm extremely excited about this interview. Um, I have Angela, De Angela Deba uh, with Moms for Liberty um, with this interview. And this one hits home, especially for me. Um, but I know for sure it will hit home for a lot of parents across uh, the United States right now. We see it all the time. We hear it all the time. We see it on social media. Parents, they are in an outrage about the things that's going on in their schools, the things that are being pushed and taught, the agenda. And we're going to talk about it today. Uh, with that being said, Angela, I am super honored. Thank you so much. I know we had technical difficulties on the first take, but here we are again. Can you just give the people a little bit about who you are and you know, how you became about um, in the organization uh, Moms for Liberty. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Moms for Liberty was launched national, nationally a, a year ago, January, mm -hmm. and we're a national grassroots organization and we fight for the, um, we advocate for our parents, parents and uh, children when it comes to government overreach in schools and especially um, here at the local level, that's my focus is the overreach in schools. Mm -hmm. And you can find us at momsforliberty.org. Nice. How'd you come about um, being in Moms for Liberty? Well, it started um, when the lockdowns took place, you know, and parents just started seeing what was going on behind the scenes when their children were on their laptops and computers during the day at home, they would walk by the screen and say, well, that, you know, that seems awkward for a third grader. So, um, and then after the first, when they went back in person, after the first week, um, I, I don't have kids, but I have three godchildren and the seventh grader came home and he was telling me about some very inappropriate things that were, uh, politically leaning one way versus another way in, in mm -hmm. his seventh grade classroom that the teacher had up on, on the hanging from the walls and wrote on the chalkboard, that sort of thing. And so I just started digging into it. And what wow. I found was quite shocking. And it really broke my heart because I grew up in public education. My parents were both fifth grade teachers mm -hmm. for 30 years. My grandmother was superintendent of our little school. So I, I was like, you know what, this is not, this is wrong. I need to do something about it. And then that's when uh, Moms for Liberty, a few months later, just kind of fell into my lap and just hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean, just listening to that story, it's like to hear your, your child come home and, and express themselves like, hey, you know, the teacher did this and the teacher did that. And obviously it disturbed the child, the yes. student, um, enough to come home and actually say something about it. I know that that would infuriate me because now it raises questions with my own child. And I have to try to answer these questions and, and not fully understanding what was said or what was shown in class. And we know with this political <clears throat> climate, with this social climate that we have right now, um, there's a lot of things that a lot of people do not agree with. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people right. don't want their child to be exposed to uh, or, or to be subjected to. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all know what those things are. Right. W whether it's um, being pushed from the extreme left. Um, what's the best way that I can say it? Uh, and we'll, I know we're going to go into it. Extreme left LGBTQP in my words, or right. if it goes from extreme critical race theory, CRT rhetoric, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these things, we don't want our kids to be exposed to. They, they completely go against our values. As a matter of fact, it goes against the values that the country was built off right. of. So I can only imagine, you know, your outrage, your, your, your disturbance from from hearing that coming from the seventh grader coming home uh, and it only prompts me to wonder like what kind of teacher was this right uh, and what would prompt them to want to do that um, so you know it, it's it's baffling to me and I know we're going to go in more depth with it um, but I know that there's a lot of parents in not only just in this county but across the United States um, that are being exposed and they keep hearing these things and they may not know what to do or how to go about uh, maybe doing something to bring change or to at least monitor and check the things that are being taught or pushed in these schools. Um, so, I, you know, and, and I want people to know, Angela, how I came about um, just to, to come about and coming across you. And, and uh, as we continue to go on, how I got to know you, um, I actually came across an article that was done on the work of Angela and the other moms that are in the group of Moms for Liberty. Um, and if you want to go look up the article, you can. 
It's um, from <clears throat> Outspoken. It's, uh, it's an exclusive Florida moms discover troves of pornography, CRT, in public school libraries. Now, um, we'll go into the pictures. Um, as you see, the article shows some of the pictures. But I was at all when I seen this article and I started reading through the article. And that's how I came about Angela and Moms for Liberty. And I just said, you know what? I absolutely have to reach out to Angela and see if she's open for an interview because this is an outrage. Th this affects me directly. And I know for a fact that it affects a lot of other parents uh, across the nation, right? They may mm -hmm. not have the same liberties <clears throat> that we have here in Florida, right? So, mm -hmm. um, Angela, you know, I, I thank you for the work that you've been doing. Of course. Um, how did you guys come about with this work? Yeah, no, well, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But I, even if you're not a parent, I got to mm -hmm. stress this too, okay? Because even if you are not a parent and you live in Pinellas County, this is what your taxpayer dollars are going to when it comes to our curriculum and our education. OK, so you don't even have to be a parent, a parent to get involved. If you want your money spent this way, you have a problem with that. You need to get involved. But um, yeah, so Moms for Liberty, we um, there's been several <clears throat> groups across the country that realized some of the, the graphic material was actually not just in their child's elementary library, but some of it was found in the classroom. So that's what prompted us to start uh, to do a um, book watch list. So mm -hmm. we just, all of us around the country just kind of got together and we put all these books together and we have this national watch list. And then we just went through in Pinellas County to see what which books were in. And we focused just on the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know, you know, high school, high schoolers are minors too, but our, there's just so much work to do. We decided right now we're just going to focus on elementary school. So that particular book um, that you showed the picture, that gender queer book that you showed the pictures. Uh -huh. Okay, that book has been removed from Pinellas County Schools. It was removed last year. Good However, job. No, however, wait, that book is still in the Pinellas County admin building in the library wow. where kids can go into the admin building and check it out without the parental approval. And the kids have access to that book online through Follett and through teaching teachings.net. Mm -hmm. um, they can access. Now, the Pinellas County School, they did tell me that they will block that access for children in when the child is in the classroom. However, that child would still be able to access that book through those two websites at hmm. home. Wow. And right now, as, as we're listening to Angela, I pulled up the list of some of the books that she's referring to, and it's just jaw dropping. It's like, why, why would they need this? And just to be clear, Angela, because I read in the article, we're talking about elementary and middle school. Correct. In, 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 not just high school. Uh, we're talking about elementary and middle school. K through eight. K through eight. These are the type of books that are enlisted mm -hmm. on their site. And I'm going to pull up a couple pictures uh, as we continue to discuss. Um, this is one called Call Me Max. Mm -hmm. um, if you can elaborate a little bit on this one, uh, Angela, we, we would appreciate it. So Call Me Max. <laughs> Uh, I'll pull in up another. In a, not all the elementary schools. It's, it's also in the pub, public libraries, which obviously I can't do anything about public libraries, but just for parents out there, FYI. So your third grader could go and check out this or go and get this book in their elementary school library and just learn that they can be any gender, any anything that they want. And they're not born necessarily a boy or a girl. And that, you know, that really doesn't matter. So, wow. yeah, so, so that's that's a problem. Um, and let me just say one thing, too. OK, we are not advocating to ban books. We are we take that very offensive when people say that we want to ban books because that's not what we want to do. OK, mm -hmm. we are moms first and then Absolutely. Liberty second. So move these books to an appropriate age appropriate section. That's all. That's all I'm, I'm asking. So that way, if you have an issue, if, or if you see your child maybe is having some sort of an issue, you know, mentally, physically, 
whatever, then that's between you and, and the parent and the child. And then you guys, you guys decide together if you want to read these books to your kids or mm -hmm. have these, your kid, you know, check these books out or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's up to the parent to right. make the decision. Right. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's a good point, right? It's moms for Liberty. We're, mm -hmm. we, we're Amer if we're the Americans that we say that we are, we're all about our liberties. We're right. about the constitution, our freedom of speech. I, I debate and I argue and go back and forth with a lot of people that are on the left that uphold and support this type of stuff, which I'll show you guys a little bit more pictures, um, which I'm going to ha probably have to blur some of it out. Um, and that's, that's the point. The fact that I have to blur it out in order to post it on social media mm -hmm. should raise questions that why would this be in an elementary and middle school and our children being exposed to this kind of stuff. Right. But right. going back to the Liberty um, point that you made, Angela, um, yes, it's freedom of speech. And, and I'm glad you, you're, we're not advocating to ban anything. Right. We, we just wanted to be categorized and put it at a, the proper age group. Right. It's like mm -hmm. a, per, a parental advisory. Right. Yeah. Um, if it's if we say, oh, they say, well, it's freedom of speech. You can't ban books and you can't you're trying to get books banned and all this thing. Well, what if if there's no parental advisory, if there's no cap or a specific category uh, category to put these type of free speech material, then what would stop anybody from putting a Playboy magazine in an elementary school? Right. right? You wouldn't want your kid just sitting there go to check out a Playboy magazine because it's, <laughs> it's got an, a, a parental advisory to it. Right. So we're, we, we understand it's freedom of speech. We're not trying to keep anybody from their, I, I don't know what adult comes up with it, it to me. And, and I'm sorry, Angela, but to me, it seems, I don't know what would prompt an adult to make these type of graphic pornographer type of books to want to put them into elementary schools. Like what type of creativity do you have going on in your mind to where you would yeah. want to do that? You know, but Hey, to each his own, it's your freedom of speech. If that's what you want to do, fine. But just like Angela said, and with moms for Liberty, they're not advocating to ban anything. They right. just want the books to be categorized and put into a, a more appropriate place to where not not only the child can make the decision under the parents uh, um, advisory. Right. The, mm -hmm. the parent and the child can discuss, OK, I want to get the, then it's up to the parent to make that decision. But to have it where it's open for any child to just come across, stumble across or, you know, we all know children. Right. Angela, they get to talking <laughs> and yeah. oh, my God, go look at this book. Go look <laughs> at this book. And now my child's exposed yeah. to some of this stuff, which I'm going to show you. So I, I'm I'm really glad you brought up that point because that is a major, major point. Yes, right. it's freedom of speech. No, no one's trying to ban any books. We just want it to be in the appropriate section to where now the parents and that child can make the decision whether you want them to check that out, go look at it and whatnot. Right. Not just, you know what I mean? And if, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, Angela. No, uh, no, you're, you're right. 100%. And then another thing I would throw in there, if you want to pull up the Florida bill, I think uh -huh. you have that. So in Florida, that's against the law, bottom line. Um, yep. And I thought it was ironic too. Uh, the last school board meeting, one of our moms. Um, okay, yeah. So right there is the Florida law. It clearly, it, you know, it, it clearly states it. Yeah, the Florida prohibits statute. any of that. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Clearly prohibits sexual uh, explicit harmful material. To minors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any instructional material containing pornography or otherwise mm -hmm. prohibited <clears throat> by Section Eight Four Seven. And you guys can look up the law, but we have it yep. here. It's an abstract of the law. This is against the law in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. But yet we have it right here in Pinellas County. We have these type of books. And, and it's like, what would prompt me my next question to you, Angela, is like, what is the screening process for this, the, our, our schools? Like, there who, is who, there, there's no screen. There's no regulation. There's no screening. So yeah. anything is slipping through the cracks. Yeah. And, you know what? I, I Here's what I ran across and what I've discovered is, OK, so these books the, the vendors for these books had have, have been in Pinellas County and been around for a very, very, very long time. So I think when administration or when librarians or whoever in the school says, oh, look, today we get a shipment from Scholastic, blah, 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 you know, that mm -hmm. they've always used books from these people for 20, 30 years. They don't think anything's wrong with it. And that's one thing that I am 
focusing on when I'm, I'm working with the school board and saying, hey, I know you trust these vendors and these organizations because you've used them for 30 years. But for you to think that none of the material or nothing has changed in the last 20 to 30 years, you need, you're not paying attention. And that's how the stuff is slipping in. I don't think that they're intentionally going, oh, look at this porn pornographic book here. Let's put it in, in the kids' elementary school so second graders can check it out. I don't think they're doing that intentionally. I just think that they're not reviewing the materials. They're just, you know, thinking and assuming that it's good because mm -hmm. it's a vendor that they've used for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, and, and, you're, you're uh, you know, it's, it's just interesting that you say that. And it's like, wow, you know, these are the books that you guys were able to catch. Mm -hmm. I wonder what else is going on. You know, I know we're going to get into CRT and other things, but so people understand, like, these aren't just, you know, I'm curious and I, I know I'm not a girl, I'm a boy and no, I'm a boy, I'm a girl. It's, we're not just talking about that. We're, we're talking about some pretty explicit stuff, um, yeah. which I'm going to pull up right now. Um, this is one, this is Call Me Max. Uh, I'm going to pull up. I guess what was inside of the book, which I think I pulled this one up earlier, mm -hmm. but people can go look it up. But um, what I'm going to do is share the screen so people can see uh, what I'm referring to here. Um, so people can see, like, you know, we're not just talking about this here where it's books saying, hey, you know, I think I'm this versus that and right. whatnot. We're talking about some pretty explicit uh, stuff right here. So uh, I'm going to pull it up. I'm probably going to have to bleep some of this out. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that are in our libraries. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just Pinellas County, right. right? You can only, we can only imagine what's going on throughout the rest of the state mm -hmm. and throughout, throughout the country. Um, these books are slipping in and kids are being exposed to this type of stuff. And once the kid gets exposed to it, you know, this one's really explicit. Uh, so. And this hasn't this hasn't just started, you know, the more I dig, dig deeper, I dig, I find I'm finding like the last five years, wow. this stuff has started to trickle in by the extreme left and their their mindset is, well, not all parents know what's best for their children. So we have to expose all the things to all the kids. That's how that's what's happening. Right. And and, and you know, what's sad about that? They're separating child from parents. Yes, intentionally. And intentionally to where now the parent has no authority over the child. And they say, right. and, and they actually believe that. They actually right. believe that. Um, th this is another book here, George, and some of the lyrics, uh, not lyrics, but some of the, the verbiage. They actually believe that the parent doesn't, literally what you just said, the parent does not know what's best for the child whatsoever. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, when, when you advocate for things like that, that means that now children have the ability to make their own decisions for themselves. And we know that that that's backwards thinking <laughs> a child, the child hasn't even fully developed their brain. Yeah. Right? Right. And, and here, here's, here's where I get frustrated, Angela, because I, I go, I'm in, I'm out. I'm, I constantly battle and talk and, and, and try to debunk and, raise questions and challenge a lot of these people in their thinking. Um, they definitely want to separate parent child from parent and the child knows what's best for themselves. And the parent doesn't know what's best for them while still advocating saying when the child breaks the law, Oh, well, it's studies show that they want to use science and they want to use statistics and things to fit when it's convenient for them. They'll say, Oh, well, it's just a baby and their brain hasn't fully developed. And most boys won't develop their brain until they're 25. But then mm -hmm. on the other hand, they want to say, no, no, no. They can make decisions to go and get hormonal injections, which would completely change the chemistry of their body. Um, they, they, they can make decisions now to know they, they can do this. That, it, and it's, it's a catastrophe. It's, um, it's leading by thinking like this leads our children down a, a, a dark alley to yes. where it, it, it leads to pain and heartache. Um, we are their parents. We want the best for our kids. Now, is, are there some anomalies out there where there's just bad parents? Sure. But overall, most parents love their child and want the best for their child. So it's not a thing of, oh, well, 
some parents don't necessarily know what's best for their kids. Yes, we do. <laughs> which is why we don't want them to be subjected to drugs, subjected right. to a lot of these um, very graphic pornography type of books. Because what you what happens when you expose people to things, it, it, it creates a curious George. Mm -hmm. And when you have mm -hmm. curious Georges, uh, little boys and girls that fully don't understand, right? They don't understand the dangers out here. They don't understand the pitfalls. They don't understand that the they, or they don't fully understand that the decisions that they make today can affect them immediately or they can affect them later on down the road right. um, permanently. And sometimes it could be detrimental. Right. So, you know, that type of backwards thinking, um, I'm never going to understand it. And we've um, already started to see some some damage being done, you know, the last two years with what's mm -hmm. going on in the country, how it's very damaging these kids emotionally, socially, you know, think about this. So this fall, when your fourth grader starts school, their last normal year of school was when they were in kindergarten. And that's sad. I'm very sad. It is. And, you know, I have a, I have two sons. Um, I know me as an adult. When I take on like online courses, it's very difficult for me to learn things online, right? Mm -hmm. So this whole year with the closures, I really feel that the effects of our kids and the learning from just being out of school for the entire year, um, pretty much the entire year, trying to learn um, remotely um, is going to be detrimental to them. Not only that, I don't think the teachers were prepared to try to teach kids right. online. I don't think they had a very good setup to be able to teach these children um, the curriculum that needs to be taught online. So I feel like the kids are going to be a little bit behind mm -hmm. uh, on top of all the just the political climate that we're in, uh, on top of the social climate that we're in with all these social issues, how it's poured into our own homes. Right. And, and, right. I, and I'm not saying that it's not OK. Uh, to talk about social issues and different things that take place in our country. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, you should, you know, if you just, if you're a parent and you, your kids raise questions and they want to talk about certain things and they express themselves and they develop their own opinion, you should in the home, in your home, be able to talk about whatever it is you wanted, whether that's politics, religion, um, social issues in the country, you should in your home amongst mm -hmm. your kids and you guys can develop and talk about different things and try to work it out. But when it starts going into the, the school systems where you have a, a teacher that you have no idea the life events that occurred in their life that may have molded them and developed them into the way that they are or the way that they think is now teaching my child um, their uh, or projecting or indoctrinating mm -hmm. right. our children uh, towards something that they're into that the whole oh, wait a minute wait a minute mm -hmm. you know what what happened to us sticking to the curriculum mathematics right. reading uh social studies uh, things like that history and uh science mm -hmm. why are we talking about hash uh fad hashtag groups why are we talking about this president is better than that president while we strip the pledge of allegiance out of schools right uh, while we strip um praying out of schools Right. Uh, and, and it's funny, those same people that say, um, well, you guys are trying to ban books. You have yeah. to remember, these are the same people, Angela, that ban books out of school. Like Mark, Mark Twain. And you know what I mean? Right. Books that have been there for years. I know. So um, I know we're going to touch up on critical race theory because you guys actually found some stuff on critical race theory. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to go into that as well. Critical race theory is something that I uh, I'm completely against. I'm opposed to it. Um, so I, while, while you go into depth on, you know, and, and I, I know you're going to send me some abstracts of the critical yeah. I'm going to pull up the book list of okay. just some different things so people can see it, uh, what we're referring to uh, when we're talking about the critical race theory. Um, so this is a book list. As you guys see, we have the fad hashtag group, Black Lives Matter, um, countless books on the subject. And me knowing just from discussing and having certain conversations with a lot of the liberal left uh, when it comes to this issue, uh, this fad, uh, fad diet, social justice hashtag group, 
um, there is a lot of anger, hatred, and resentment, and and what I would refer to as anti-white uh, right. rhetoric. And I'm sure it. I'm I'm 100 sure it is in these books. And um, Angela is going to get me some abstracts. So can you touch up on uh, what you guys found as far as critical race theory? Yeah, definitely. So, um, well, first of all, they they won't. You're not going to go into a school or look at a curriculum or a syllabus, and it's not going to say, "Okay, t- class, today we're going to teach critical race theory 101." No, that's not what it's it's going to say. Mm-hmm. They inject it in other ways. They use other. I call it word gymnastics, where they just kind of yep. you know change the words and stuff to make it sound like it's okay. But bottom line is, it's pitting us against each other, saying that you know, whites are oppressing blacks and et cetera. And that's just not true. If you look, if you look across the country and studies show that if you are born, no matter if you are black, white, Asian, whatever, if you are born into a two parent home, Mm -hmm. mother, you have a father and you have discipline, chances of that child, regardless of their skin color, is going to graduate from high school and they're going to become successful, whatever your definition of successful is, that's going to happen 90% of the time. And it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. But these teachers, they're getting away with it. Some of them are not, some of them are teaching what they're supposed to, what's on the curriculum, Mm -hmm. but some teachers, and we've identified one particular in Dunedin High School who is teaching the 1619 project and he's projecting his his own college thesis onto these children. And that's how he's teaching his history class. He's, and we even called the principal and the principal said, "Um, no, that's not what's in the curriculum here. Well, this teacher took a, a, up on himself to just have his own curriculum in the classroom without the parents knowing or the principal knowing. And he's under investigation right now. Wow. Shout out to you guys making, you know, this is a sensitive subject because and and me speaking freely, a lot of people that if they identify as white American, um, they're, they're afraid to stand up and speak out on this stuff because they don't want to be called racist. Right. Right. And that's what irritates me the most about this. Um, and a lot of them, maybe they feel like it's white guilt, um, man, maybe because they feel that black people been marginalized in this country, hugely marginalized in this country that they're maybe that they, that, you know, they should have a a, a passion or or an empathy and allow these people to do what they're doing. Not really understanding when we say CRT, what that really means. And, and, you know, I debate and talk about this all the time with people that are on the left, black liberals, white liberals, whoever, whatever you want to identify yourself as. Um, they always say CRT is not that it's not what right. people are saying that it is. And every th- none of them are able to really define what it truly is. So they right. try to hide CRT critical race theory under saying that it is, um, they're trying to keep people from teaching black history. Right. Right. Um, I think I posted it on my Instagram the other day, uh, me calling out uh, these hashtag fad diet um, groups like black lives matter. Uh, He posted saying this is, they're trying to keep us from learning about Martin Luther King jr. And I said to myself, that's, that's furthest from the truth. (laughs) That's not true whatsoever. Nobody's trying to keep anybody from, um, learning anything about Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, no one's trying to keep anybody from learning about anything with, when it comes to black history whatsoever. What people are trying opposed to and, and trying to keep people from is critical race theory, which um, and this is my thesis of what I've gathered over time. Uh, critical race theory is basically is saying that the system is all racist. Everything around us is right. racist. The whole system is racist. Every, they'll even say this interview right now is racist. Yeah. Right. Conscious that, that, bias. It's a conscious bias, right? Unconscious, yeah. Uh, an unconscious bias. They'll say um, race defines everything, mm-hmm. right? Um, everything has to be identified and compartmentalized based off of race, right? Completely goes against on the topic Martin Luther King Jr., but I'll, I'll digress. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, minorities are victims because they are viewed as inferior. Right. If we listen to their talking points, um, they always say, well, we have post-traumatic stress from slavery, an era that they never experienced in their life whatsoever. 
um, but somehow they are affected today in 2022. Right. Right. Um, we need reparations and, uh, oh, well, the because this happened, this is why we're reacting the way that we are. It's always an excuse um, for the behaviors and the, the, the reasons why people fail. Mm -hmm. um, so they always say my, um, the, their argument is always, from, in my eyes, in my opinion, an inferior standpoint. Um, going forward, character is meaningless, which kind of plays into what I just said. Uh, character is meaningless, meaning like, well, the reason why the person was non-compliant to the police officer is because we've been underdeveloped in um, over the years because of uh, policies and because of America and the way we were treated and we've um, X, Y, Z is the reason why we behave the way that we behave, which is not true. Right. Um and the, the next one is uh, everyone is inherently racist. And if you think you are not, this mindset will show why you should be, which if you just think about what I just said, makes you do a mental gymnastic backflip in your head. But when, 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 when I say that er, everything inherently is racist to give people more content, they literally think that like if Angela were to have a child today, as soon as the child was born, the child is racist. Mm -hmm. And and this is CRT, and I'm not right. making this up. Right. This this to me divides us more in our country. And why would you want to expose or teach your kids CRT? T teach your kids the, these type of theories, right? Mm -hmm. These theories developed out of people that were in the era that were angry <clears> and upset <throat> for a lot of the things that took place. These people that created mm -hmm. this whole CRT. But this is not what's going on. It's not Black history, and and I'm a Black man. Let me say that, Angela, and I'm going to let you you put your thoughts on it. It's not just white folks that don't want their kids exposed to CRT. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not just white folks. It's every ethnic group in this country. We see right through this. Yeah, um, don't you I, think that's insulting? Doesn't very, that insult you as a it's black in, man? It's, it's, it's very insulting. I know. It's that's very, I'm a black think. man. I don't want my kids exposed. I don't even want my kids looking at everything as, by race. Right. Right. And and going back to the post where I was talking about on Instagram, the guy was talking about Martin Luther King Jr. because of the holiday that just passed. Mm -hmm. It goes against everything Martin Luther King Jr. stood for, what he was the face for, the civil rights movement. Don't judge people off the color of their skin, but off the content of their character okay. and their values. But if we go back to what I've collected over CRT, character is meaningless. Right. This is why they're able to justify riots. And tearing up things and, and damages, assaults to people, even taking people's lives. Mm -hmm. We see it on TV. We see when they advocate and they say, oh, breaking into a Macy's and robbing a Gucci store is reparations. So yeah. this is the mindset of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to understand it's not just white folks. It's right. Asian Americans. It's uh, uh, Spanish. It's black folks. It's, it's every ethnic group you can think of in this country. We don't want CRT. So to push it or to take it upon yourself as a teacher to push this agenda, to subject other people's kids to whatever molded you or whatever life experiences that you were faced with, it's it's uncalled for. It's unprofessional and it's not right. It's harmful. It's harmful. So, you know, I know I want to rant just now, Andrew, because I'm very <laughs> passionate about this. I don't want my kids subjected to uh, these 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 type of books. I don't want my kids subjected to uh, this type of thinking, these theories, these ideologies. And it's clear that it's taking place. It's taking place right here in our own county. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, I know I went on a rant. I'm going to let you put your thoughts in on that. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, no, she's like, no yeah, he got, he, he got cranked up. <laughs> like, yeah, man, I get I pissed. It. I love it. No, what we're seeing, okay, a lot of this... Um, we've been going to school board meetings, okay, for a couple of years. And what we're seeing when we go through before the meetings, we'll read the, um, the agenda items. And we're seeing mm -hmm. a lot of this, I mean, a lot of it was already implemented in some of the schools years ago, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is coming in now through all the funding from the federal government. So the federal government is literally spending billions of dollars on these racist curriculums. So 
my what my goal is Pinellas County Schools still has to receive their SR3. Okay, their SR3 mm -hmm. funding is a millions of dollars. They have not received it yet, but in this SR funding, it's saying it's the federal government is telling the our school, our county, how they have to spend this money. And if they don't spend it the way the federal government says they have to spend it, they got to give it back. And so I'm going to make sure the county gives it back because what this is doing, again, kind of with the books in the library, they are using curriculum that they've used. Avid is one of them. Um, Any town is another curriculum that they've used for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is another example where they think, oh, we've used these curriculums for, you know, 30 years. Nothing's wrong with them. Well, no, now it's it's uh, critical race theory. It's equity, equity, equity. Every time you hear the word equity, run far away because they don't need to be teaching equity. They need to be teaching equality. And another yeah. issue that we're having with all this money ushered in from the federal government is the teachers training. Literally, they teachers next month are going to a training. Um, it's called, well, they keep changing the name of the training. Mm -hmm. First, it was called um, anti-racist training. Um, now oh it's called, God. now they changed it to inclusive language training. And the book that they are using to train these teachers with next month is White Fragility. By Robin They're using White Fragility? Oh, my God. By Robin DiAngelo. Mm -hmm. Right here in Florida? In Pinellas County. So isn't it against the law? They're not allowed to do yeah. that. But what they yeah. do, what they're, they're, what they're doing is they keep change. They move the goalpost. Right. They change the name. Right. So it's not diversity and inclusion. Okay. Well, we're not allowed to say that. So we'll change right. the name. Yeah. So it's like, like if when we would get up and speak at the school board meetings, if we would say CRT or critical race theory, they would cut us off and wouldn't let us speak. Because, wow. if, you know, like I said, you know, you're not going to go into a school, a classroom and see a curriculum that says CRT on it or critical race theory on it. So we have to, you know, use our words differently, because if we would say those certain words, they would cut off our microphones. Wow. And these are the same people that say that parents that show up at school boards are terrorists. Exactly. Right. One thing I will say is uh, Pinellas County, we did remove ourselves. We are no longer associated with the National um, School Board Association. Mm -hmm. So, no, they cannot call the FBI on parents now at school board meetings. Oh, good. That was clever. So, <laughs> yeah. can you explain how that came about? And, you know, because there's going to be people not just in Pinellas that will be watching or listening. Yeah. Um, they're going to be in other states. They may need to. That's great information so mm -hmm. that we can stop being labeled or, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's several uh, states now. I don't know exactly the amount of states. You can look it up on your state's government site. But yeah, in October, um, Florida denounced their or they removed their affiliation with the National School Board Association. So Pinellas has not paid any money to the National School Board Association since last summer. We're not associated with them whatsoever. Nice. So I, I did have parents tell me when this first happened in October that they will never come to a school board meeting again because they're afraid that they're going to be put on a list. Yeah. So so now um, that's it's a bull. It's a bullying tactic. Right. It's a right. bullying tactic. We see the thing about and I, you know, I know that th to me, honestly, this is a bipartisan issue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care what side of political aisle you lean on. If you're a parent, and you care about your kids. Some may agree like, yeah, I think we should push this stuff. Some yeah. people, regardless of who you voted for or, or politically where you lean, you might not agree. Like, I don't want my kids exposed to this stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is not just a right or a left thing, right? Right. But, well, I will say one thing. I had a lady call me, call my group last week. She's an immigrant. She's here, you know, legally, but mm -hmm. she was an immigrant and she's even admitted that she's a Democrat. She's super, super liberal. She's, mm -hmm. you know, pro-masking, get all your vaccines and all your boosters. But by golly, when we started talking about critical race theory, she is like, sign me up. I will be at your meetings. I will go to these school board meetings with you. I will help you get rid of this crap in our schools because it's only dividing us and it's harming our children. That is exactly my point. Yeah. This is a, um, this is a, um, it, it doesn't matter where you lean politically. Mm -hmm. There is just parents out here of all ethnic groups that don't want their kids exposed or pushed to, uh, to um, right. this stuff pushed or indoctrinated on their kids. Yep, it's exactly. just, it's, it's not a good thing. And it's not what people keep saying is, oh, they're trying to keep people from learning black history. It's not. No. It's not. 
it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's teaching people to look at everything as race and everything is racist. And because you're uh, um, fair skinned, you're white, you're racist because of mm -hmm. terrible things that happened in our country's history long, long time ago. Right. That you're somehow you're racist because you are a darker complexion. You're black. That because of all those things happen, there's always going to be some per person on the 13th floor that's white, that's racist, that has their foot on your neck and you're mm -hmm. inferior and you're not going to be able to accomplish or do anything in this country. And that is just such a victim mindset. And it's right. the most irritating thing ever. And it, to me, it teaches hatred. When, yep. we look, when we look at kids playing, they're not thinking about race. No. They're running around having a good time. These things are, they're exposed to this. They're either taught at home or they're exposed to it. And I don't want my kids, my kids are not um, taught that crap at my house. We're taught to treat each other how we would want to be treated. Right. It don't matter how somebody looks. We're going to treat somebody, we're going to judge somebody based off the content of their character and their value mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. I don't want some teacher because they had a bad experience in their mind or they think that they didn't get a job because of the color of their skin. So they're going to push some old anti-white hatred, anger, and resentment and push that on my kid and expose my kids to that type of thinking. And that, at such a young age, like at first such graders, a young, think of their mental, a first grader's mental capacity, and they can, some of them can't even tie their shoes, but they're supposed to understand mm -hmm. critical race theory and equity. And I'm oppressing you because you're, you know, your skin is a different color. What first grader is thinking like that? Well, and it's no. sad. <laughs> why, 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 what, what good is it going to do? Not, not. I, I can I can arguably tell you that the civil rights movement worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. It worked. We're in 2022. All these different th rhetorics and things that's going on, and they're saying that somehow we need to be afraid to coming out of the house, the LeBron James of the world. Yeah. It's not true. It's no, not I true know. at all. You know, and, and I, I, you know, I know this is a different subject, but I, I'm more uh, in fear of someone that looks like me. Me possibly dying, I have a higher chance of dying from someone that looks just like me. But I'll digress. That's another conversation. I don't want to yeah. veer off of what we're saying. So, you know, let, let's come to a conclusion here, Angela, because this was a great conversation. I know we're going to have many more. Um, <laughs> I would love to come to any of the meetings that you guys have. Yeah. Um, when you guys, whatever it is you guys go, I want to be a part of the fight. And I'm going to do it in the way that I possibly can. It's every third Tuesday of the month. Every third Tuesday of the month, I'm going to bring it back up um, yeah. so people can find the group, especially if you're in this area. I know they have, is it na nationwide? They have different nationwide, chapters? Nationwide, yeah. We have almost 80,000 members now. Um, but just go to momsforliberty.org is our mm -hmm. website. And then you'll just scroll down to your state and then click on your county. And if you email that person, it'll go right to whoever the chapter chair is for that county. They'll get your email and they can add you to our emailing list and our social media. Absolutely. So yeah. let's, so just in closing, let's, we know the dangers of this, right? Mm -hmm. What's next? What's next for Moms for Liberty? What's next? What's the next action step that parents can take? Um, if this at least expose them to raising eyebrows to wondering, well, hey, maybe I need to either get involved <laughs> or maybe I need to check up and be behind my own child. And what are different things that whether you're a parent or not, and you're just a right. concerned person, what are different things that people can do um, to get involved or, or just be more proactive versus being reactive, right. be proactive to what's going on and what, what, what is happening? Well, I would say, you know, first get involved locally because there are so many problems in this country. You know, I realize, okay, I, I, I'm one person, I can't solve them all. So I'm going to do what I can here, grassroots here in Pinellas County. But I will say one thing that we do got to worry about nationwide is where this type of curriculum and where this type of these left leaning um, ideologies are coming into the school. This is where it's going to lead to. Okay. Cause right now today, as we are speaking on Monday, when, eighth graders go back to school in Atlanta public schools. They are segregated by their skin color. The are you kidding have, me? No, look it up. The blacks have go into one classroom and then the white where, where, kids go into. Where can I look that up? Um, I can send you a link to it. It's in Atlanta. There was a mom that went in and, and she filed a complaint. So hopefully they ended it, but not 
I would yeah. love to try to yeah. find that. So that's in Atlanta. Then in New York City is the same thing. They are seg public schools. Some of them are segregated, segregating. And then in Denver, Colorado, um, they have their own playground time. So the black kids have one playground time. Wow. And then the white kids have one playground time. So if you think that's this sad. stuff cannot happen in your backyard, this is where this crap leads to. Okay. So you have to get involved. I don't care if you just go to make one phone call, one email, show up at one school board meeting, talk to one teacher, volunteer in your kids' classrooms, talk to people. So many people are afraid to speak out. And you know what? If you are afraid to speak out, call wow. me. I will set, I will find somebody in your, in your school district, in your county, somebody that can help you, somebody that can speak for you. If you're in Pinellas County, I will go with you to speak to somebody about these issues because we have to take, take, take our country back. Wow. And we have to start right here at locally. And it is happening. People are waking up. Look at what happened in Virginia, how, you know, parental rights basically got them a public a Republican governor. Okay. And moms right. and dads are winning school board seats all across the country. Um, our school board here in Pinellas County has been very, very responsive to me. They've reached out to me. They want to work together. So I think that that's a positive, mm -hmm. but again, just get involved any way that you can. And if you need help, just reach out to me and I will find you that help to get involved. Absolutely, man. Um, you know, when, when you said that about the Atlanta schools and, and New York schools, what, what people may say, no, nah, that's impossible. Th this stuff is literally taking place. It's really happening. Um, I'm going to pull up a clip because I want you to see. The, I don't even know if you've even seen this, Angela, um, but I expose and I show these different things. They have stuff like they call them multicultural spaces. And this mm -hmm. is at the college level, let alone okay. them doing it in elementary, middle and high, there is nothing positive about positive segregation. No. It's like we've literally went backwards. Exactly. We've done yeah. a complete, we've gone backwards, people. Like how, how is this happening in our country? I'm going to pull it up and share it. I want to, I want to see what your thoughts are on this and then we'll close this on out. Um, let's see here. And she had no idea I'm getting ready to uh, share this. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, they call it a multi, multicultural space. Public service yeah. announcement. Listen to this. Excuse me. If y'all didn't know, this is the MSC. And frankly, there's just too many white people in here. And this is a space for people of color. So just be Can you believe this? Of the space that you're taking up. Because it does make some of us POCs uncomfortable when we see too many white people in here. It's only been open for four days. And frankly, there's the whole university for a lot of y'all to be at. And there's very few spaces for us. So, so sad. Thank you. And this is this is <laughs> taking place in our schools, man. You're telling me that they're doing this now in our schools. Mm -hmm. It's sad. There is a there was another one where um not just on the critical race theory, but where they were exposing our children to other things where it's like literally these are teachers. Um I'm going to try to find it and pull it up. Uh, I want to close it with this. Um this one here. This is a school teacher. This is a preschool teacher. And I'm sorry for the volume. I don't know if you can. So I, I don't know if you could see the caption on that, but mm -mm, these are these are teachers teaching this stuff in school. Um, let me see if I can pull The reason for me about why having queer representation and queer educators and queer education in the classroom from a young age is so that these kids will grow up to either be wonderful and accepting allies who have had this normalized in their lives from a young age. If you normalize queerness from a young age, they're more likely to be more accepting and understanding. And if they do not grow up to be good allies, I hope that those kids who later on realize that they are queer love themselves and are able to express themselves and be proud of who they are. And that these kids are able to see people like them in their lives and say, hey, that person's just like me and it's okay to be me. That is the main reason for me about why this is so important. This Thank is what you happens for your question. When you go to college. 
<laughs> the, the college indoctrinates kids. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to play that. Um, I think it, I, I want people to see that what we're saying is just, you know, none of this is happening. This stuff is happening. I post it all the time. Uh, I debate. I go back and forth with them. I want to close it with this, and then I'm going to give you some closing remarks, Angela. Okay. Um, what she just said, she's a teacher. Uh, in no way, and, and I, I'm, Angela, if I'm wrong, correct me. In no well, way I didn't we... hear what she said. I didn't have the volume. I didn't hear what Oh, she you said. couldn't you couldn't hear anything? I couldn't. Yeah. Just can you okay, so, sum it up? Okay, I'll sum it up. She's basically saying that, you know, if kids feel that they're wanna be this, that, and a third, right? Right. Um, that they should be comfortable in, in expressing themselves to be there. Look, I, in no way am I advocating that if someone decides that they want to be whatever they want to be. They should do that. What I feel is it should be in the homes, mm -hmm. the parents and the child should be having those discussions. You as a teacher should not be in the school, in my opinion, exposing my child and talking about those things. That right. should be up to me uh, as a parent. You know, the, the, we have a value system here. Um, we have a set of rules on how we live our lives in our home and how we expect them to go out into public or into the world and, and re not only respect themselves, but to respect other people. Now, as they get older and they want to develop a different opinion or, or <clears throat> a, a lifestyle or, or whatever it is that they want to do, at that point, they are an adult. They can do whatever they want. But when it comes to the school system, um, the schooling system, in, in no way I feel that any parent should have to worry about another adult exposing their child to these types of things. Um, so. Um, with that being said, Angela, I'll give you some closing remarks. Um, I'm sorry you couldn't hear the audio on That's that. That's okay. I'm, I've probably seen it before. I've seen it all. But teachers like that right there, that's the reason why Florida had a sign in last summer, the Florida mm -hmm. uh, Parental Bill of Rights. And you know what's really sad? We shouldn't have to have a Parental Bill of Rights. True. It's our God-given rights. Why do we need a bill to say that? True. Sad. It is. It is. Well, you know, Angela, this has been um a very good conversation mm -hmm. uh i think it's one that needs to continue to have i love what you guys are doing just here in pinellas county um and like i said earlier um i'm i'm all about supporting in any way that i'm possible in in my best abilities uh, which is why um i advocate for people like stephanie myers uh, to run for these positions of school boards mm -hmm. we and, gotta and get her elected <laughs> we need to get her elected we there's too many uh, left-leaning people on the board and we need more people that represent us represent right. our values right represent um our values or, or things that we we uh put emphasize emphasis on right on things that we agree on when it comes to our education with our children uh and things like that so um she's a good woman um so i definitely advocate for stephanie myers um shout out to stephanie too uh, but again, Angela, thank you for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. I, I love the work that you guys are doing, uh, which is why I wanted to do this, this interview with you, this, this piece and cover this, because these are things that are affecting a lot of people all across the country. Uh, and this is just one aspect of the fight. Mm -hmm. Our children, right? Michael Jackson had the song and I know I'm using Michael Jackson. Um, the children are the future, right? Yeah. Our children are the future. That's right. And if we don't fight for our future, then what we have as a country, as we see, it's 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 gone. And this is why they know to attack mm -hmm. the education. Right. They, the left, we know that is an important part because over time that will weed out the values, the respects that we have, how the country was built off of. Right. right. So we, we want to intact those things. We want to conserve those things. Right. With me being a conservative. Um, so again, thank you, Angela. I appreciate you coming on. How can they find you? Um, do, do you have any social pages? Yeah. yeah. Um, again, it's just momsforliberty.org and just click on Pinellas County. That'll come right to me. And then we're on social, all of social media. Um, just go to moms for Liberty and then find us at Pinellas, moms for Liberty Pinellas. Awesome. Again, thank you, Angela. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, oi. <laughs>